think it. I don't think they make any more questions. It's just nobody wants to take that. Well, I'm ready. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Let's bring improvement service committee to order. Approval of the minutes from the regular meeting, September 13th, 2017. Motion made by Manning. Second by Vanderlees. Under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor. Meetings motion to carry approval of the agenda. Motion by Swery. Second. second by Vanderlees. Sure. Under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor. Aye. 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 carry. Three, consideration of possible action and request by Luxembourg Casco School District to obtain small equipment motors collected by DPW sanitation section for the use in small engine repair class taught by the school. Director Gunnier. Uh Luxembourg Casco High School is restarting a small engine class that has been discontinued for several years. Uh, obviously, a school district, uh, another governmental agency, uh, we're all faced with tight budgets and they currently do not have any inventory uh, that they can utilize for teaching the course so Mike Van Handel the technology education instructor for the Luxembourg Casco School District reached out to the operations director Mr. Pierlot uh, requesting our consideration in helping them with their small engines outdoor power course uh, this what they're looking for is primarily uh, materials dropped off at the bunker but also if we happen to find something uh, during bulk collection or if somebody has an early set out or things like that. They're looking for small engines, uh, preferably ones that don't work so they can teach kids how to repair them. Uh, what makes this a different request from some of the others that we have entertained but not, uh, not granted in the past is again, this is another governmental agency. It's not a for-profit. It's not uh, a not-for-profit. Uh, it's not somebody who could potentially be uh, making money on this, but more for educational purposes. So uh, staff does not have a problem with this, so we just bring it to the committee for your consideration. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve by Worry. Second by Nitting. Under discussion. You're not all in favor. Aye. Aye. Motion carried. For consideration with possible action and request by Alderman Moore to review parking utility include hours of operation, time spent in neighborhoods, revenues through citations, staffing. <laughs> Director Gunnar. And this I am going to turn over to Chris Pierlot, the operations director. Chris Pierlot. <coughs> yeah, I, I, I prepared a report. I, I won't bore you going through all the, every single word, but I'll, I'll summarize it for you. There's like a little history on our parking, how, how it came around to be part of the parking division for public works. We currently have four enforcement attendants only in parking division. It's been that way for many years. Um, we do. Uh, like industry standard typically is what I refer to as selective enforcement and that's not, and that's not to their targeted enforcement basically you, you have known known problem areas downtown uh, you know higher parking densities uh, around schools uh, uh, that, you know that type of thing and you have known times uh, in residential areas generally you don't have as many many issues so you don't do regular routine enforcement and, and rounds in a residential area all day every day you just, you just don't do it and the resources laws of diminishing returns you're not going to have a lot of citations that's not, again that's not the reason that we we uh, write citations is not to, to generate revenue but just for compliance well, you know, every time I park outside overnight it seems to be cool. well yeah the, the overnight <laughs> is a targeted uh, if you will uh, you know, there's a little more emphasis on that because that's a citywide but uh, I have to agree with you on that um, with the reorganization uh, a little bit of re with the new parks parking access and revenue control system that just went in this year uh, are that all the cashiers are, are no longer in the table of organization that saves some some uh, funding but along with that the new equipment we had to increase uh, maintenance staff by one person a custodian uh, and uh, we also proposed and got approved to add an enforcement attendant so mm -hmm. purely by the numbers we've increased it we're uh, as of October 2nd we're increasing our enforcement staff by 25 percent we're going from four to five uh, which will add more daytime enforcement and in addition, let me go back a half a step. We've never, parking utility before parking division, now parking division has never done weekend enforcement. Uh, we do Monday through Friday. We start as early as eight and end as late as uh, 
five thirty at night. Police and the CSIs are allowed to write parking citations, so they help out. But their percentage is pretty low compared to the what parking division does. Our our plan is with the new parking uh, enforcement person is to do enforcement on Saturdays. So that's going to be primarily you know downtown is relatively docile. You know we don't have people in all the office buildings, so we're going to spread ourselves out more around the city. And on the weekends, you have more activity in residential areas. So there will be some education, if you will, in the form of, unfortunately, negative reinforcement, uh, called the, also known as parking citations, mm -hmm. to uh, do better. You know, it's also going to help us do better during the week around schools. We have a lot of problem around schools with the parents and uh, not obeying we are doing what they need to do and potentially endangering the safety of students. So we, I think every single older person has experienced that. Chris, I has one question for you on that. Um, any <coughs> consideration given on like Packer weekends to work on a Sunday instead of Saturday? Because I know, especially over in the Lombardi district, I hate, the police are so busy with other things, I hate to have them come out for someone parking in front of a fire hydrant or blocking someone's driveway. And so those things usually don't get, get ticketed and you have frustrated residents. and. We have over the years, uh, parking has provided uh, sporadic enforcement on, on Sundays on Packer Game Days, depending on what the issue is or, or conditions are, say if it's a big playoff game or whatever. And then parking would, exactly like you say, all of them would enforce, no, you know, make sure they are not parking into the intersection, make sure they're not blocking driveways, make sure they're not uh, blocking fire hydrants, but the rest of the stuff you kind of go a little bit easy on as long as there's right. substantial compliance. But the big violations we have enforced uh, on Packer game days in the past, not every Packer game day, so there's a, obviously a possibility and, and to do that. We have done that. It just depends on Any what, what the needs be the because The only thing I can tell people is call the police, but right. when they break their calls, that's not Yeah, if, if we, that would have to be planned a little bit in advance, but you know, like a day or two before the weekend if it's a Sunday game, but it's definitely doable. And like I said, we have done sporadic. Uh, uh, just me a suggestion. Where are the wishes of the committee? I had one uh, oh, question, go ahead. if I one could. Uh, uh, I, I get calls from time to time from people sure. who complain about the, have, having to make, pay the late payment fee. Uh, what length of time do you allow people? And, and the, the argument people make, uh, is that uh, well, I, you know, it wasn't enough time to get it in, and you know, uh, if I mail it in, or you know, what, what are the, what are the procedures? The late payment policy, and it's actually written into the uh, ordinance, also because there are fees that need right. to be established and adopted, has been it's it's written five days. That's five work days, five business days. So it's seven. It's a week. Okay. Seven calendar days. So because all, all we're not counting Saturday Sundays. Before, before the first step kicks in, and then after that is 20 work days, which is basically a month to kick Somebody in. Before, in before we would notify Wisconsin DMV that sure. these are outstanding parking citations, because then that can go to uh, registration suspension on your car. Yeah, if somebody drops it in the mail, do you have to receive it by? No, it has to be postmarked. Yeah, by postmarked. Okay, thank you. So actually, you know, they could put it in on the last day and by uh, no offense to USPS, we call it, we finally call it snail mail. Comes two days later, it's nine days. It was postmarked by yeah. the seventh day. Okay, I was wondering how many handled that. Question, Steve, did uh, Joe Moore get a hold of you to see what he's looking for? I contacted or contacted Alderman Moore directly and okay. we spoke about it. Uh, he the what what the genesis of this uh, request was he had a couple residents similar to uh, other districts about uh, concern that do we have enough parking in uh, enough parking enforcement in residential areas should there be consideration for others or change in the program we are changing the program uh, it's kind of running parallel to the request my re my request in as a recommendation as it's stated in the report is to allow parking division to add its fifth person. We already have that person uh, coming on board October 2nd, uh, next Monday. Monday is when they start and uh, we'll go from there and we'll develop and modify and, and morph into a, uh, the different, you know, the improved program. What are you looking for then, Chris, for a motion then? 
I mean, there's really no, I don't see act, possible action on a request. Yeah, and at the end, uh, I mean, that would be like how many hours, how much time spent, how much revenue is being brought in, and staffing. Yeah, you mentioned staffing, but I mean, yeah, and I, what are we looking for? Report, yeah, I can talk to you about revenues. Okay, that's what that's the part in. I can talk to you about revenues. It's uh, you know, we and the report the, the the zones. I talked a little bit about it, we target, right. if you will, the the zones where okay. there are no problems. Respond on complaint on other problems. We're adding the fifth person to okay. to do better throughout the citywide. Right. Um, our revenues on uh, on the last page. The revenues are pretty decent. I, I'm not something that I necessarily want to pat ourselves on the back for. That yay, we're making revenues on parking citations because it doesn't sell them real well. That's not the, again. Citate revenue is not the primary reason to write parking citations. It's to maintain control and order and right. a negative form of education, okay. if you will. Uh, but the revenues are there. All right. Um, you know, the parking division is not hurting for budget. It's making ends meet and putting money away for okay. the future. Motion to receive, Motion to receive and file by Vanderlee, second by second. Any under discussion? There are none. All in favor? Aye. Nays. Motion carried. Moving forward, number five. Consideration possible action on request by Alder Alderman Zima that the city consider providing an opening on the east and west sides of West Mason Street Bridge to allow the possibility of a turnaround for traffic when the bridge is up for an extended period of time similar to the openings on the Main Street Bridge. Director Grenier. Uh, this was something that Alderman Zimmer brought forward in February. Uh, I finally received a response back from the Wisconsin Department of Transportation on August 17th. A copy of that response uh, should have been included in your packet. Mm -hmm. uh, short answer is WSDOT is not interested in pursuing uh, providing any such gap in the median for the West 50, uh, Wisconsin State Trunk Highway 54 Don A. Tillman Bridge. Uh, they don't want to introduce new operational issues that have a greater risk of leading to crashes on the bridge that are currently operating safely. safely. Uh, they reference state statute 346.33 sub 1 sub F, uh, which indicates that an operator of a vehicle may not make a U-turn on a highway at any place where a U-turn cannot be made safely without interfering with other traffic. Uh, they reference that due to lack of a shoulder by the barrier, a motorist would interfere with other traffic on the bridge approaches by slowing or stopping unexpectedly in a live lane of traffic to make a U-turn. Uh, the motorist could decide to make a U-turn at any time of the day, even when the bridge is open to normal traffic, causing a conflict with uh, traffic that's at 35 miles an hour or more. Uh, due to the cross-section of the bridge approaches, a U-turning vehicle will unlike be unlikely to end up in the nearest opposing lane to traf traffic result in, in multiple lanes of traffic being backed up in both directions. It's impossible to locate a median barrier gap that's in the right place for every motorist. So uh, what Alderman Zima is requesting, let's just take a look at the westbound movement. So as you get past Webster Avenue, the last opportunity to get off of that bridge is to get down onto Monroe. So once you miss that exit ramp, all the way up to where the bridge opens, that gets stacked up, causing delay. Where do you locate that break in the median? And what happens if the person who feels inconvenienced and wants to make a U-turn is in the outside lane? How do they cross that traffic and get to the gap? That's what he's saying is it's impossible to locate it at the proper location. Uh, and that there's no guarantee that the motorist right next to the gap will choose to make a U-turn, thereby enabling the next motorist to do so and so on down the line. Uh, I did indicate that if the city is interested in pursuing this further, the concept could be suggested and evaluated during study of the next bridge improvement, and they anticipate the next bridge improvement to either be a redeck or a superstructure replacement, and that is about 10 to 12 years out. Superstructure. Okay. Questions, concerns? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Move to receive and place on file. Motion to receive and place on file by ending. Second by aye. Second. Worry under discussion. You're none all in favor? Aye. 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 Carry it. Seven. Consideration with possible action. No, number six. Consideration with possible action on request with the Department of Public Works to amend 
the state municipal agreement with the Wisconsin Department of Transportation for the reconstruction of Webster University to Radisson Director Grenier. Anytime that we enter, anytime that we receive federal or state funding for uh, a highway project, uh, we have to enter into an agreement, a state municipal agreement with the Wisconsin DOT. And periodically after we enter that agreement, there are additional modifications that come up. In this case, uh, there were two project IDs added on page two of seven of the SMA. If you look, there is now ID 4987-02-68, Railroad Crossing Surface and Switch, and ID 4987-02-69, Railroad Signals and Gates. That is for the crossing of Webster Avenue at Eastman. There's a rail crossing there. Uh, it was anticipated all along that this crossing was going to have to be dealt with, but they didn't have any estimates of what that might cost at the time, so it wasn't included in the SMA. They're now adding it in uh, just so that it's covered under the agreement. It has always been anticipated uh, that the lion's share of those costs would be city costs. So uh, for the railroad crossing surface, um, Wisconsin Central is anticipated to pay about 35% of that with the balance being city costs. Uh, and the railroad signals and gates are going to be a 50-50 split between uh, the feds and the city with Wisconsin Central not paying anything. Again, this project is capped at a $4.91 uh, million dollar funding. Uh, so any additional costs would be city or responsibilities. That was always anticipated as part of the project. So this really is procedural, adding the railroad stuff into the contract. Would there be any problem getting the uh, 665 from Wisconsin Central? No. What happens with these rail issues, um, we'll actually be meeting with Wisconsin Central in advance uh, of, of a hearing, but this winds up going in front of the Office of Commissioner of Railroads. Uh, it's always better if we meet with the rail company before we go to an RC OCR hearing and come to consensus with them because then we go to the OCR hearing with a plan that both parties agree to. The OCR enters that as an official de decision. It's actually a legally binding requirement uh, that's imposed on both parties. Okay. I did have a question. Mr. Chairman, go ahead. Thanks. Steve, uh, my math wrong or 35% of 505,000? Not 66,000. Is it supposed to be 15% or should that number be bigger? Hmm. Or might it be Yeah, you're right. Should be closer to 167,000. Or is it 15%? They think? If you look at the cat, uh, there's an asterisk there. It's always an asterisk. That's why. <laughs> the asterisk, when you go down to the bottom, of the table, it says total federal funding is capped at 4.91 million. So, with other commitments within the project already, it normally would be a 65 35 split, mm -hmm. but it's 35 percent and then it's 65 percent plus the balance. So, because we're already capped out at 49, 4.91 million, we have to absorb a larger portion. I could add money into the railroad crop, but then they take it away from the participating construction because we're capped uh, at 4.9. So, if you're there, you yep, have to pay so much. Exactly. The, okay. the, the federal participation is capped at 4.9. And, and again, when we entered into the original SMA in 2014, 2015, we knew that going in. That's always been the, the understanding. So. Entertain a motion to receive and place on file. Is that what you're looking for? Or Actually, we'll be looking for a motion to approve and authorize the director to execute the amendment. Okay. Motion by Worry to approve and have the director execute the agreement. Second by Sorry, the Second. Netting under discussion. Okay, none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Seven. Consideration, possible action on request B by the Department of Public Works on proposed 2018 parking division rates and fees report. Uh, Director Gunnier? Oh, yeah, actually, or Chris have, Pierlock. Uh, Mr. Pierlock, take this one as well. Okay, as you all recall, at our uh, last Improvement Services Committee meeting, uh, we proposed a rate uh, structure for 2018 for, for parking division. The only uh, change we requested was 
to the uh, parking meters hourly rate from 75 to 80 cents an hour. Mm -hmm. And then there was some discussion about uh, uh, is that enough for, for revenues? Uh, I did some sensitivity analysis and some spreadsheets, all that fun stuff that parking managers do. Um, I drafted a, a little report here. Basically, just to start out uh, on, a, on a second page, uh, uh, for each 1% rental rate increase, and we've typically gone no more than 2% in any one year, that will increase the revenue by a little over $15,000. It's not a lot. Uh, and then for each $1 citation rate increase, and I broke it down by citations, uh, it's generally anywhere from well, $100 parking citation, I have it's increased to $1, anywhere from a $3 uh, budget increase up to a almost $15,000 budget increase. And for each nickel that we'd increase our meter rates at, that's a little over $18,000 of, of revenue. Now, that's just information. But look, taking a look at um, when we go through our, our annual uh, budget for parking, we don't look at revenues first. We look at what do we need to operate the parking, and that includes putting money away for the future in, the, in a capital reserve account because we have to buy vehicles and equipment down in the future. I have a vehicle and equipment uh, replacement plan built out, you know, in a, growing the crystal ball, of course, out to like 2040. So I, I'm thinking ahead, we're thinking ahead quite a, quite a ways and, and it, putting in cost of living adjustments for potential future expenses. So it's, it's all taken into account. In addition, we got new parks equipment which uh, we typically uh, spend twenty-five, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 a year on a maintenance uh, program for, for our parks equipment. It's under warranty. We're saving that money in the, this first year. We, uh, we reduced our staffing, our custodial cashier staffing. We added a couple more, but that reduces our operating budget by another $162,000 for 2018. We um, included some, built up some efficiencies in um, uh, maintenance and repair costs. And, uh, like I mentioned, uh, material and supply needs are down for next year, and we, we budget, you know, we don't budget real close, tight to the budget. You, you build a little bit in, but not a lot. I don't like to build fluff into budgets. But knowing that, we're, we're still, the 2018 budget, when we came into the last meeting, was still uh, putting, uh, proposing to put in, a number here, it was 468000 almost $469,000 into the capital reserve account just in 2018. Now for reference, in my 27 years as being parking manager, we've had years where we only put in $69,000. And this four sixty eight that might be the highest we've ever put in. Uh, typically it hovers around $100,000 a year. We'll put in a capital reserve for the future equipment needs. So the 2018 budget, you know, we're trying to, yeah, obviously we're not lo looking to, to, to be uh, raising rates for the sake of raising rates. And we're looking at, we're looking into the future and we're looking at um, what do we need now, what do we need for the future, plus what's palatable for in the parking industry and for our parking patrons. And I believe that what we proposed is, is a good budget for 18. It's one of the best budgets I've seen in a long time, especially in our financial times. Uh, however, having taken a look at this, um, I was conservative when I recommended we go up a nickel only because sometimes raising rates has been pretty contentious in the past uh, for various reasons. To go a, a nickel an hour increase in the parking meters. Typically you want about 10 cents an hour or possibly more because you want to encourage people not to park in front of the front door of that business unless they really need to be there. If you're going to park all day, the idea is to park in a ramp, and we offer first hour free in a ramp, plus it's a, it's a lower rate per hour in a ramp. So with that, after doing this analysis and review, my only recommendation change from our last meeting is to make no, uh, to do no rate changes for 2018 except for parking meter rate increases but I, I'm, I'm recommending instead of five cents an hour increase, a 10 cents an hour increase. Now that'll raise the revenue another $18,100 approximately. So now we're pushing close to a half a million dollars in capital reserve. It's a very good budget. And we're looking at the future. Uh, we're being good to patrons by you know, one year of pretty docile rate increases, but 
parking division is not hurting for budget at this time. Right? Mm -hmm. And, and I, I believe it's very sound. And, you know, it balances the future with the present. Okay. Any questions or concerns? If not, I'll entertain a motion. So, so are we going? Alderman Nenning. Are we going to 85? Sir? Yes, that is a, yeah, I, I, there's a typo in there. I, I, 75 to 85, but, but the recommendation is to increase it to 10 cents and go from 75 cents an hour at the meter to 85 cents an hour at the meter. Okay, thank you. But that would be the only rate increase for 2018. Okay. Any concerns or questions? If not, entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Vanderlee. Second by? Second. Worry. Under discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? <coughs> Aye. 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 Motion carried. Eight. Consideration with possible action on a report by the purchasing manager. Request. Approval to purchase 17 digital mobile radios from Nielsen Communications Incorporated for 11628 This is essentially a request to piggyback off of a bid that we did in 2014. Um, uh, we went out for bids on uh, radios. The award was made for Hytera radios through Nielsen Communication, um, and that bid included uh, communications infrastructure. That's correct. Okay. Uh, these additional radios uh, will work off of that same infrastructure system. So uh, we're, we're requesting kind of a sole source on the Hytera equipment uh, for this expansion of the radios for parking. Are they replacement radios, Randy? Or they are replacing some VHF old radios, yes. But they are for uh, DPW operations. Randy Freeling is our communications specialist. Uh, Randy's been working on a plan with me over the past two to three years uh, to sequentially upgrade and, and phase out the old VHF uh, radio system to go to a digital mobile radio system uh, for a variety of reasons. Interoperability with other departments, uh, more reliable communications, and better coverage across the entire city. And, when it comes to radio system designs, uh, Randy helped design the system that ET used to phone home, so I trust him with <laughs> I trust his recommendations. Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Van Early, second. second by Worry under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Nays, motion carried. Nine. Consideration, possible action on request by the YMCA for a permanent limited easement within an alley at the rear of 235 North Jefferson Street to allow existing mechanical room to remain under alley pavement. Director Grenier. During a utility system upgrade project that's going on throughout the downtown this summer, it has been discovered that uh, there's a graphic in your, in your packet that shows the alley between the uh, the YMCA and uh, and the building to the west of it, and there's a red crosshatch area shown on that graphic. Uh, what was discovered this summer was uh, during some potholing through the concrete of the alley uh, in that crosshatch section. It turned out that it wasn't a concrete alley. That was actually the roof of a mechanical room uh, servicing the YMCA. That was an unrecorded. Um, encroachment into the public alley obviously to ask them to lift the building up in the air and move their basement would be uh, not something that would be uh, acceptable to either parties uh, so we did talk with the Y and the best thing to do is to have them apply for an easement uh, into the alley to allow that encroachment to be there that way it's recorded on documents uh, and known to all parties when they come to do work in the alley. So staff does recommend approval of this. Obviously, with the age of the building, that <coughs> basement mechanical room has been there for quite some time. Move to approve. Motion to approve by Nenning, second by Vanderlease under discussion. Here none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Nays, motion carried. 10, consideration of possible action of the following offering price reports. Webster Avenue, University Avenue to Radisson Street Project. Should I, Steve, should I just read right through these? Yes, or, please. Okay. Housing Authority of the City of Green Bay, 94,000. Broomwall Property Management, 93. James Drummond, 93,000. 
Reginald and Jean Dockstader, 89,000. James and Kathleen Wanachek, 112,000. Roger DeLarwell, 103,000. Private Portfolio, 54,000. Carol Potasik, 79,000. David and Jeanette Klaus, 80,000. Richard and Bonnie Detage, how to pronounce that? Ninety-two thousand. Director Grenier. Uh, as part of the Webster Avenue real estate acquisition process, one of the initial portion or the initial actions that needs to be taken is an offering price report. This is the offer we're making to the property owner. Mm -hmm. All eleven of these parcels are those fo are folks who have come to the city voluntarily asking for early acquisition on on this property. Mm -hmm. uh, so the staff does recommend approval of the OPRs. Any questions or concerns? If not, entertain a motion. Quick question for Steve. Steve, how many more properties are involved in on this? Uh, I believe there's a grand total of 24. 24 dollars. So nice. we got the first 11. There's uh, 13 remaining. Okay. Thank you. Any other? Questions or concerns? Yes, so I'll entertain a motion. Motion by worry, second by. Second. Dang. Under discussion? Hear none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Nays, motion carried. 11, Director's Report, Department of Public Works, Steve Kinnear. Uh, got a short report for you tonight. Uh, getting close on the budget. Hope to have something to report to you soon. Uh, but Consistent with uh, with some of the uh, sentiment that was ex uh, expressed by Alderman Vanderlees during our uh, during our task force meetings, we are trying our level best to keep costs contained. DPW has done that, you know, for at least as long as I've been here, and I learned from uh, my predecessors that they were doing it too. So uh, we're doing what we can to, to try to hold costs in check and make it uh, cost effective for us to provide our services. Um, Weather has played havoc with construction this summer. Uh, we had periods early on, especially and throughout the midsummer, where it seemed like every other day we were getting rain. As a result of that, it's kind of pushed our construction schedule back. And project, we know projects are stacked up. We will be out continuing to work on projects right up until Thanksgiving, which historically has been when uh, both concrete and asphalt plants have shut down. So there's not going to be an early stop this summer. We're going to work right until we can't any longer. Uh, residential subdivision continues to pick up. We continue to get more and more uh, requests from developers to look at additional subdivisions. Obviously that translates into net new growth and helps with our tax base. So that continues to be a good sign. And uh, just want to bring up again, loose leaf collection. Loose leaf collection begins on October 9th for our first round. That means nobody should have material set out to the curb any earlier than uh, October 2nd. Final round of loose leaf collection is November 17th, which means all material has to be out to the curb no later than November 12th. This is something that comes up every year. I get questions about this and, you know, Steve, can't we start early and can we continue to pick up after the 17th? And as much as I wish we could, the simple answer is uh, it's not possible for staff to do that. Prior to this, I've got the staff that normally picks up leaves is out doing road maintenance work. So if we want to stop filling potholes and cracks and that kind of stuff, uh, you know, that's something we can talk about in the future, but we've made those commitments to get that work done this year. And when it comes to the end of the season, I understand fully. I've got six trees in, in my yard as well. I get it. Sometimes the leaves don't fall when you want them to, and those leaves come down after that, that drop dead date in November. But it takes about three weeks start to finish for me to convert the fleet over from summer operations to plowing operations. And any time after November 17th, I'm rolling the dice if I don't have the fleet ready to plow on that day. So, you know, is it something we can talk about for the future? I guess it is, but the the, the trade-off on that would be if the council makes a decision to extend loose leaf collection in the fall beyond that middle of November date that we've picked and we wind up getting a snowstorm, then we're going to have to deal with three or four days that the roads don't get plowed because the fleet's not going to be converted over. And that's not a gamble I'm willing to take. 
So that's where we sit with the director's report today. You know, I know a, a lot of, uh, I know the notice said that we, uh, that you should, if you rake your leaves to the curb prior to October 2nd, then you will be charged for an extra pickup. And a lot of people have done that because leaves really fell fast. And it should say you week. may. Okay. I think the, the, Am I going to go out and pick the leaves up and charge somebody? No. The short, the, the, the real effect of what's going to happen is it going to sit there for two weeks and your grass may die. Sure. I was going to make a comment because, I mean, it takes, and sometimes, and I've, I've talked to you about this, Chris, it takes time for the city to even pick a brush. Yep. So what the heck? If they put it out before October 2nd, why don't we, you know, just let it sit there. And just like you just said, Steve. You make a good point. We there. will change that notification. I, no. it, we it's not we have no desire way. to go out and charge somebody $70 for putting their leaves out early because I can't get to it anyway. That's what I was getting at. So yeah, we'll change that notification right. to indicate if you place them out early, they're simply going to sit on your terrace. Right. And we understand that, like for example, this season, they leave some of them are, some of the trees are churn, right. changing early. So yeah. but people want to take care of their lawn. So yeah. they, we know they're going to rake them up. Sure. So we're not going to punish them for that. No. Perfect. One yeah. quick question then, Steve. Uh, when you make that notification in the paper, I saw you had one already in the paper. You know, a lot of people put the, the leaves on the street. If you could make a notation in there about not putting the leaves and the debris on the street. Now that <coughs> is something entirely different. Putting them in the street is actually, we, we use about $200,000 a year comes out of the storm sewer account and gets transferred over to operations and that money is used for loose leaf and yard waste collection. The reason for that is getting those leaves out of the gutter and not allowing that to get into the storm sewer helps us with our storm sewer permit um, the utility director, Matt Heckenleibel, is currently working with a representative here locally from Wisconsin DNR. DNR is looking at adding a, a credit for our storm sewer permit for loose leaf collection. Currently we don't get credit for that against our, our permit, but DNR is working on a guidance that will allow us to get that credit. If folks are raking, raking materials, and this goes for loose leaf, it goes for grass and brush collection during the summer, uh, if they're raking that stuff down into the curb line, as opposed to leaving it on the terrace. If they rake it out to the terrace, fine, we're happy with that. But if they're raking it out into the street, they may wind up getting citations for that because that's a violation of our, it's a violation of the ordinance and it's a violation of the ordinance because it's a violation of our permit condition. So point taken, we will make sure we make that dif differentiation as well. That, you know, we've, I know we've got it in there, but I think we could make it stronger that r material could be raked to the curb but cannot be placed in the street. And we'll put it in big, big, big bold letters that because this is a <coughs> violation of our permit conditions. And maybe that'll help explain or, or some people pile the leaves, you know, real high and the kids are playing and if a car came in, they'd run the people right over. Yeah, and it, as long as that's up on the curb, that's it's one thing. Problem. But if they're out in the street, yeah, that's the you're problem. right. Safety issue. How many of you but played in leaves? In the street when you're kids, everybody. That's not you good. never did, Steve. We didn't have them out in the street. Oh, you did. No, okay. <laughs> I know I did. We're still here. What is Matt? So, uh, well, let me talk to you after. Sure. Okay. Any other questions? Entertain a motion. Adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I worry. Second by a. Second. Then any other discussion here? None. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So it's carried. Steve, I need. Um,